Well, you know, it's sunny right now, but that could change in a heartbeat. If I can show you ways to save on your utility bill, would you be interested? Of course you will. Let's go in the shop. You know what? I'm all for reducing your energy cost any way you can. If that means you have to walk around your house and changing out your light bulbs to CFLs, compact fluorescent tube bulbs, that's fine. But you know what? There are better ways to save big money in your house. And the way to do that is to really consider the insulation of your house and how you can reduce your energy costs that way. Well, for example, you have a house like this. This is a regular house. This is your exterior wall. It's made up of studs. We have them all through our house. We all know the pink stuff, that's the perfect insulation, the stuff works great. You want to make sure you have this for your house. But consider this, these wooden studs, woods conduct heat, they conduct energy. So you've spent a lot of money bringing up 70 degrees into your house. You've built this big old hot warm room in here, but what's happening, because it's cold outside, all this warm air in, inside your house wants to escape to the outside and it's going to come through these studs. What that is called is called thermal bridging. You have created a bridge from the inside of your house to the outside because these studs are non-insulated. Think of it this way. If I would take all these studs in my house and I'd slam them all together, it's almost as if you have one complete wall in your house that's non-insulated. So what's happening is you're paying for all this energy, all this heat, but you're losing most of it. Now, if I can save you 20% of your energy costs, you'd be really interested in that. The way to do that is to make sure that your house is properly insulated. And one of the ways to do that is with insulated vinyl siding. Now, this foam backing is placed on the back of a vinyl siding. And what this does, it creates a complete blanket around the house so these studs are now insulated. So you're not gonna lose all that heat from the inside going to the outside of the cooler air. It's just a perfect way to blanket the house. When you're out purchasing insulated products, you wanna look for a high R value. And what that means is resistant to heat loss. So the higher the R value, the better insulation for your wall. So you wanna make sure you look for that. Well, let's talk about garage doors. You know, garage doors, really people forget about these, but if you have a garage like mine, where I have a garage that's attached to the house, what's happening is I have a common wall from my house into the garage that's probably not insulated. So what's happening there is that thermal bridging. The warm air from my house is going through that common wall. It's coming into my garage and where does it want to go? It's going to go out through your garage door that's probably not insulated. So when you go out and looking for a garage door, make sure you find a garage door that has a polyurethane core in it that is completely covered with insulation. So inside these panels, you want to make sure that there's a polyurethane core so that you're not losing all the heat from inside your garage through your house to the outside. Another thing to look for when you're purchasing a garage door is this thermal break right here. Now remember I was talking about thermal bridging? What happens with a regular garage door that comes together like that, if it doesn't have that vinyl spacing in between, what's happening is that little bit of gap is allowing warm air to escape to the outside where it's cold. So this is just something you want to look for, this thermal gap right here, this thermal um, barrier so that you don't lose heat. So make sure that when you're purchasing products, such as a large opening like this, your garage door, make sure that this is insulated as well. Entry doors, another thing that we don't consider, you know, for the longest time, a lot of entry doors were just wooden doors and wood again is a good conductor of heat. So you've got a very warm house, you've got a wooden door, but what's happening, all that warm air from your house is escaping through that wooden door to the colder air. Warm air wants to go to cold. So when you're purchasing a front door or an entry door, again, polyurethane is the thing that you want to look for. You want to make sure that there's a polyurethane core. Another thing to look for is that your door frame. A lot of companies make sure that they have a good vinyl bridge between the door and the door frame. So there's this bridge. So when you close the door, it actually seals shut so that you're not losing air through the gap. Again, think about thermal bridging. Anything that allows your warm air to go through any type of gap to the colder air outside, that's called thermal bridging. And that's how you're going to have a high utility bill because you're basically paying for warm air that's going outside. Another thing to look for is always look for insulation in all your products. 
So this door is completely insulated. Make sure that your walls are insulated and make sure your garage door has insulation as well. Okay, we've really covered a lot of things that you do on the exterior of your home. Don't forget your entry doors, your siding, and your garage doors, also your windows. But let's talk a little bit about what you can do inside to reduce your utility bills. One of the things that you really should be doing every month is change out your furnace filter. I do it once a month, make sure you change it out, put it on your computer so there's a reminder to say, change out that furnace filter. Programmable thermostats, a lot of people have those. Learn how to use it. Make sure you have a programmable thermostat. When you leave during the day, it automatically reduces your heat. You don't have to heat your house to such a high degree, and that will help you do that. Pull down your shades during the day or at night so that you don't lose that heat from the inside of your home through the windows. That's one way to do it. CFLs are great, compact fluorescent bulbs. LED lights are great ways to reduce your utility bills. So there's a lot of things you can do to really help your family save some money in their home. I just thought those tips would help you along. I know that I do in my home. There's things that I look for, so I hope you can do those in your house as well. For instructions for today's projects, plus great decorating ideas and do-it-yourself home projects, plus recipes, kids crafts, sewing projects, and more, everything for around your house, visit us on the web at mattandsherry.com. Today's show is number 104. A complete DVD set of all 13 episodes of Series 100 of Around the House with Matt and Sherry is available for $49.99 plus $6 shipping and handling. You can bring Sherry and Matt into your home to help you with your decorating and home projects. Visit mattandsherry.com to order.